The Blue Eddy AC200 Max is one of my top recommended middle cap sized solar generators or solar power stations, whatever you want to call it. To be in the middle cap category, you have to have at least a 2000 watt inverter with at least 2000 watt hours of battery capacity and at least 800 watts of solar input, which the AC200 Max can do. So I'm gonna go over the things that I like and dislike and how it performs doing efficiency testing, solar charging, wall charging, all of that here in this video. So you can see firsthand exactly how the system works running through all of those tests. So stick around so you can see why this is one of my top recommended middle cap units. So the AC200 Max is able to add two expansion batteries to it. With the system, it comes with the user manual and warranty card. It comes with an XT90 to DC cigarette lighter charging plug. It comes with an XT90 to MC4 adapter, as well as whatever their two pin DC port to XT90 adapter is. And then the wall charger. Unfortunately, it still uses a huge wall charger adapter brick. And this huge adapter brick blows the fan all the time if it's plugged in, which is one of the annoying things if you're using this as a UPS. But it comes with all of that right here, as well as a little bag to carry everything in. Now, if you go to my solar generator comparison chart, I'll put links down below, you can see all of the specs of the system right here. But this does have a 2200 watt inverter with 2048 watt hours of battery capacity and can do up to 900 watts of solar input. And the solar input is from 10 to 145 volts and up to 15 amps. So it's definitely possible to get 900 watts connected to this. You can easily over panel it. Now it's designed to be paired with the B230 or the B300 batteries from Blue Eddy. They connect directly into the side here. This is a pretty hefty unit, but it's got two battery expansion ports here on the side. And then here we've got the eight millimeter adapter port, which is for wall charging. And then here we have the two pin input port for solar. Now Blue Eddy definitely has one of the easiest ways to get a unit connected to the app. So I'm gonna do that live right here. So you can see I have these other units listed here. I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus button. I'm gonna click scan. And on the back right here, there's a QR code. I'm gonna go ahead and scan the QR code. So you do have to make an account with Blue Eddy, but all you gotta do is scan that and it pops up just like that. And then I'm going to click it. I can go in and rename it if I'd like. I'm just gonna call it AC200 Max. I wish they had just called it the AC200 because they have the AC180, they have the AC60, the AC300, the AC500. So they should have just called this the AC200, but instead they called it AC200 Max and that's fine. So I can go through here and for example, I can turn on AC output just like that. And AC is now on right there. DC power, click it on right here on the app. And now it's on right here. Same thing, I can control them turning them off and I can monitor the battery percentage, how many watts are going back and forth. And even when you turn on the AC power or when you have power going in, whether it's solar or wall charging, now if I go into the settings here, you can see I have auto sleep turned on to never. So I always want the screen to be turned on and I always want this unit to be, remain on if I've turned it on. I can go in and I can check the firmware. Everything seems to be updated. I've never shared a device with anyone, but apparently you can share this device with others so that way they can monitor it as well. And it's a very simple app. It works. It doesn't have a bunch of awesome features like the EcoFlow does. The EcoFlow has even more options, but you don't necessarily need all those options, but I wish it did have more options like the EcoFlow. So the app connectivity is incredibly easy. You have to download the app, register your account, connect to the Wi-Fi, and it does everything for you very easily. If I want, I can even power off the unit from a distance, but once you've powered it off, you won't be able to power it back on with the app. You'll have to go manually turn it back on. And just like that, it turned off. And we do have a TT30 RV plug. It's still only rated to 2200 watts output. Then we have four NEMA 515 plugs here. We've got two USB-A, two more USB-A and a USB-C. And then here we have two 5521 DC ports. And then this is a 30 amp out DC port. And then here we have a 10 amp out cigarette lighter port, which is for 12 volts, 10 amps. Now to get into the testing, the first test that I did was I did a 0.2C discharge, which just means I took 20% of the battery capacity, call it about 400 watts, and I did a 400 watt discharge through this system to see how long it would last, and I got an 80% efficiency out of it. 
I got 1,630 watt hours out of the battery running a 400 watt load consistently. So it's 80% isn't bad, but it's definitely not great. Great would have been 85%, but it is not uncommon for a lot of these systems behind me to get even less than 80%. So 80% is admirable, but you need to be aware of that. You're gonna get about 80% of the capacity out of it. Now, I don't have any B230 or 300 batteries to expand on this to show how that works. Maybe Blue Eddy would be interested in sending some of those out. Maybe if this video gets enough likes, who knows, we'll see. And then I can do a follow-up test. There are mobile chargers up on the top here, and those work great for having up to two phones or tablets up here charging. Now for me personally, solar rechargeability is the name of the game. That's what I care most about is will it run my equipment? So that refers to the inverter. And then how long will it run my equipment, which refers to the battery, and then how fast will it recharge the system so I can continue running all of that equipment, which refers to the solar rechargeability. In a pinch, you can recharge this from a gas generator using this wall adapter brick right here, but it charges at about 500 watts. So it will take this about four hours to fully recharge. So I wanna go ahead and get right into the solar input on this and see how well that works. So I've drained this down to 49% here. I want to test running an AC load on it while we have solar input, but I want to see what solar input we can get. One thing that I do appreciate that Blue Eddy has done is they not only listed that the voltage range is 10 to 145 volts, but also the current range, which is 15 amps right here, makes it so much easier to understand how to properly connect solar panels into this to get the max solar input. So to make sure I'm doing everything right, I've got my solar cables here. I have seven 200 watt solar panels connected to this, a total of 1400 watts input. I'm gonna go ahead and get my voltage checked at 138.6, which is well within the charge parameter. There are two pieces for solar that come with the AC200 Max. There's this two pin right here that goes in the side to an XT90. And then here we have an XT90 to MC4. So I'm going to combine these two XT90s together like so. And then on here, you can see there's these notches around the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and line those up here, go right in. You don't have to screw this in, but I tend to do that because I don't want it falling out. And then we're just going to connect our MC4 connectors together and we will have 1400 watts connected to this. And we can see this is going up already. Now this is rated to 900 watts of solar input and we are getting more than 900 watts, which means this is working beautifully. We can see we're getting 126.6 volts, 916 watts. If we do the math on this, all we have to do is do 915 divided by 126.4 and that shows us we're getting 7.24 amps into here. That is one of the cool things about the Blue Eddy is that you can see all of these fine details of the whole battery, including the solar panels, how it's going in. We can check the batteries themselves here. We can see the battery number one, because there's only one battery in here, is at 50% and it's online. We don't have the two other batteries connected. There's just all sorts of great information here. Now I'm gonna go ahead with the AC on. I'm gonna put in a heavy load. It should be about a 1200 watt load. Yep, there it is. So we can see we've still got 915 coming in and just about 1200 going out. And what this means is that this is going to be in a state of discharge, but 900 of the 1200 watts is gonna be taken up. And so we're really only collectively running 300 watts to run this electric heater down here. So the beauty of this is because we're using 900 watts to run 1200 watts, leaving 300 extra, it's gonna drain this battery much slower However, it is not going to be charging at all. Now, if I switch this down to a lower load, this will go down to around 600 watts. This is gonna stay about the same. So you see we dropped to about 800 watts. This one's a little bit above 900 watts. So now technically we have power going into the battery while still running the heater. We're not gonna be able to fully recharge this though because 100 surplus watts over that 800 here is not enough to fully charge the battery from 50% to 100% in the amount of hours left today. One thing that some people have griped on is it doesn't show a time frame on how long this load is going to last, or it doesn't say how long it's gonna be until it gets to 100%. And then if this was more than what was coming in, it's not gonna say how long it has until it runs till empty. That is a basic feature that you'll find on most solar generators or power stations, but it's not on the AC200 Max, which for you could be an issue. For me, I don't really mind so much, but it would be nice to have that. Now, the biggest gripe that I have with this system is actually the wall charger. I simply wish that it didn't need this big power adapter brick because it's so noisy. 
This is louder than this. And that really annoys me, especially for the fact that if I wanna use this for pass-through charging or as a UPS, this has to be plugged in all the time. And I don't like that the fan doesn't turn off. That's really annoying to me. So for me, that's nearly a deal breaker. Obviously, it's not a huge deal if you're not running the wall charger all the time. I don't have a problem with that running the fans when I need to recharge it, but if it's just sitting on the wall outlet charging and then I'm running my refrigerator and freezer or anything else off of this, I want to not be bothered by the fan. Now for the wall charger to be the biggest gripe that I have is actually pretty impressive because I'm usually pretty critical of these systems and especially of Blue Eddy because I have had issues with them in the past, especially with their customer service, but they are working really hard to make their customer service better and they are working really hard to make sure that their systems work more efficient. And they have a huge family of systems, anything from small, tiny portable systems all the way up to the AC500, which can run your whole house, which I'll have more reviews on that in other videos so make sure you subscribe for that but I do like the AC 200 max for minimal emergency preparedness I can fully recommend it for that because it has good battery expandability it has good enough solar input to recharge the system in a single day while still running that equipment and I'm talking about running like a refrigerator and a freezer and Wi-Fi and TV and radios and phones and laptops and other small devices you can easily include in that a microwave, toaster, coffee maker, CPAP machine, all of those types of things run very well off of this. Now, when you get into like portable or window air conditioners for those hot climates, this probably isn't going to be enough because it's not enough solar input to recharge it while still running that equipment. So that's where you would need to jump up to the AC300 or the AC500 if you wanted to stick within the Blue Eddy family. That's what I help people do every day is figure out what system's gonna work best for them for their situation with what they wanna run. So if you want help with that, just shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. But overall, this is a very good unit. I definitely recommend it for light preparedness for emergency backup power. It's not gonna run for days on end unless you have those solar panels with it because the solar panels are gonna be vital to recharging it while running that equipment. So I could clearly see this working for a fridge, freezer, Wi-Fi, TV, and those little things, constantly running for days on end as long as it's sunny every day. And then if you need, you can use this to recharge from a gas generator or something like that in just a few hours which is great. So this is a direct competitor to the EcoFlow Delta Max and other similar size systems like the Pecron E2000 LFP. This one is definitely top of the list because of the battery expandability and high solar input compared to the other systems out there. This one's definitely a winner. So if you're interested in comparing those, click the comparison chart link down below. I'll also include links down below for the complete kits that are related to the AC200 Max. You can get it with solar panels and cables and all the accessories you need. So you buy one kit and you're 100% good to go. The most important thing guys is to prepare for self-rescue. What that means is you need to be able to depend on yourself and not on anyone else in a time of emergency. That doesn't mean you won't get help from somebody else. You just need to have the skills and the gear to be able to handle things on your own. So this is one of those tools that can really help with that. So with that, prepare for self-rescue. See you guys in the next video.